Okay, so now the history of NLP. This is going to be a really quick video because there's a whole stack of information on where NLP came about uh, on the web. So you can do a quick search. But just to give you a real background, just imagine taking yourself back around 30 years into the state of California in the USA, and in particular, the University of California in Santa Cruz. Now, I've actually had the fortune of doing my trainers training there, and it's an absolutely beautiful university. But 30 years ago, it was the seat of very innovative thinkers of the time, and two of these innovative thinkers were Richard Bandler and John Grinder. John Grinder was in a linguistics professor uh, at the university at the time, and Richard Bandler was a student studying under, among others, John Grinder. And he was very interested in the mind, in hypnosis, in getting people to change the way they think about the world, and had a little bit of a club, which he invited John Grinder to come along. And after many weeks or months of arm twisting, John decided to come along to this club and see what Richard Bandler was talking about. And he was so impressed by the ability of this group to actually change the way, the structure that people think, getting people who didn't like their veggies to love veggies as much as chocolate or to be able to go into hypnosis and be able to recount stories which they couldn't otherwise, things like that, that he thought that there was something there. And then so Richard and John decided to work in partnership and they came up with this very, well, quite innovative idea at the time, which was, if someone else can do it, then I can too. And this is really the fundamental principle that underlies the idea of modelling, which means that if there is someone in the world that has a skill set to be able to do something, then we, anyone can do it if you act the same, talk the same, and probably most of all, think in the same way as that person does. So what they did was they looked at some of the most impressive people who were making changes uh, from a therapeutic point of view in America at the time to see if they could copy the way that they did it. And they came across Milton Erickson, who was considered the foremost hypnotherapist at the time, who was able to have a, just a general conversation with someone about gardening skills and get the, that person to have incredible improvements in their health or people to overcome huge phobias just through uh, what they call conversational hypnosis which means not this kind of you are going into a trance type of hypnosis but just generally talking and displacing their resistance and then inputting suggestions into their subconscious mind that would help them overcome fears things like that. The second person they wanted to model and see if they could replicate was Virginia Satia, who was a family therapist and well known at the time for getting incredible results with families that were virtually at war with each other that would come together and make peace and love each other and then it would stick. And then the third person they modelled uh, was Fritz Perls, who some people may know as the originator of Gestalt therapy, which is a therapy in and of itself. And so by modelling these three people, the idea was if I could do, say, and think the same as these three people, I could get the same results that they get in their practice. Now the interesting thing is that sometimes the people themselves, Virginia, Fritz, and Milton, didn't know how they were getting the results they were getting. It was done, they almost, they knew it intuitively. They were all the health practitioners, but they couldn't detail exactly, oh, I do step A, then step B, step C. So, Richard and John videoed, copied, sat in on lessons, and gradually noted the very, very fundamental things and steps they did to get the difference that they needed. And from that, the uh, NLP was born through a series of techniques which were very practical and useful in getting the results that they won.